and welcome to your presentation from WCBN 88.3 and FM on YouTube of Michigan women's basketball, the Wolverines against Western Michigan's women's basketball squad. This is Zach Corson along with uh, Charlie Goodwin. And we are happy to present you this top 25 Michigan rated, this top 25 ranked Michigan team facing the unranked Western Michigan squad. Michigan's ranked number 25 in the AP poll and tied for 24th in the coaches poll. Some big expectations for this team, even though they are only returning two starters. Uh, yeah, this Michigan team had a really good season last year. Um, went to the, I believe, quarterfinals of the Big Ten tournament. Lost a heartbreaker to Maryland by one point. And then they lost in the second round of the NCAA tournament to a five-seeded Louisville. Uh, they That one wasn't really close. But um, this season is just the third time that the women's basketball team has been ranked in the preseason poll. Uh, the other two times coming in 2001 and 2017. So a big step in the right direction for these Wolverines and a lot to look forward to this season. And as I said prior, the, there are only two returning starters and 39 of their minutes from last year up for grabs. As only three players returning played more than 20 minutes last year. But one of those players returning that isn't a starter from last year's team that is a starter now is Nas Hillman. Nas led the team in scoring with 13 points per game and seven rebounds off the bench last year. And Michigan lost, along with their seniors last year, they also lost their starting shooting guard, Deja Church, who transferred to DePaul. Uh, yeah, Deja Church is definitely a big uh, hole to fill. She was really great for the Wolverines last year. But the biggest piece for this Wolverines team is, I believe, Nas Hillman. Like you said, she was an absolute beast last year. She is a uh, consensus preseason Big Ten, all Big Ten team this year. And I think she's poised for a really great season. Yes, Only Nas, a sophomore. Only a sophomore. Um, she has a lot to look forward to. Yes, Nas, Nas Hillman was the 2018-2019 Big Ten Freshman of the Year, voted by the media, and the Big Ten Sixth Player of the Year, along with all Big Ten first team consensus last year. So, as you can see, as a freshman last year, she made her mark felt, and then this year coming in as a starter, she's going to be even bigger. So along with her, there are also three key freshmen coming in with Isa Verjao, the six foot four freshman center from Brazil, with a stop in North Carolina for high school, being the biggest of the three. She was the number 12 recruit uh, coming in from high school and led her high school team, National Christian School, to the D1 championship and a runner-up finish in the championship game. She she is the tallest on the team, and in that exhibition game against Northwood University, put, poured in 18 points off the bench, leading the team. Uh, yeah, it's much rarer in women's basketball than men's basketball for freshmen to have such a big impact. Um, we'll see what these three freshmen that the Wolverines have this year can do, but that's why Nas Holm was, was so unexpected last year, because as a freshman, she made so much of an impact, which it's not the same for... Um, as in men's, where you see like an R.J. Barrett or Zion come in and have like this immediate, this immediate um, effect on a team, women's is much more. Um, women, since it's much more likely that they stay for all four years, you have the more experienced and upperclassmen players usually leading the team. So that was why Nas Hillman's effect on this team, on this Michigan team, was so unexpected. But it's obviously something that they're going to welcome because she's still so young. And you see this this Michigan squad right here as they take the floor with the starting five of Amy Dilk at point guard, Aken Ray Johnson, shooting guard, Kayla Robbins, small forward, Haley Brown, the other forward, and Nas Hillman at the center as they tip off with Michigan off of off of Western Michigan. Michigan will take the ball from the right from the left sideline. Michigan is in their white white uniforms with yellow and blue trimming with the blue M's on the shorts and Western Michigan in the black and gold trim uniforms. Michigan going left to right here. On the right, on the right side of the court, it is Robbins for three from the right wing, and it is good pass from Dilk with the assist. Amy Dilk was really good last year with the assist as an overall player. Yeah, they, they left Robbins wide open right there, and she's going to drain that most of the time. So. And there was a back cut by Western Michigan, but a pass was too far. It is Michigan ball going from left to right. 
Uh, Wolverines, led by head coach Kim barnes Rico entering her eighth season. I had the uh, privilege of hearing her speak in class. It's amazing how much passion she has for the game. And now there's a Kenray Johnson on the left wing. Cross-court pass to Robbins on the right wing now. Pass to Dilka in the right corner. Nas Hillman posting up, giving a screen for Dilk. Dilk steps back behind the three-point line and off the rim, off the backboard, and over the backboard. That hit just about every part of the basket besides the bottom of the net. And as you can see on the court now, there are two three-point lines, one for women's, one for men's, as the men's move theirs back to the FIBA line. So now it is Western Michigan bringing the ball up the court. On the right wing, now pass to the top, top of the key, pass to the left wing, and shoots for three, and it is no good. Johnson with the rebound, bring the ball up the court. And she's driving on the right side, passes to Johnson, passes to Haley Brown, excuse me. Nas Hillman on the left block, and it is good. Hook shot. Two points for Nas Hillman. Great look inside by Haley Brown. Uh, Nas Hillman was wide open. She just hit her, and it was an easy layup from there on. And Western Michigan now with Bailey bringing the ball up the court. Pass to Wool in the corner. Wool driving, kick out. Mid-range jumper on the left side, no good. Michigan bring the ball up the court. Pass, long pass across the court to Jess Robbins. I mean, excuse me, Kayla Robbins, that is. Kayla Robbins with the field goal, and that's two points. Michigan leads 7-0 with eight minutes left in the first quarter. Western Michigan now with the ball in the key. Nas Hillman defending. Hillman with the rebound. Two Western Michigan players are down. Michigan's got numbers, five on three. Pass to Kayla Robbins. Kayla Robbins, or that is a Kenray Johnson, going up for two, and she is fouled. Uh, this Michigan team is clearly just a stronger and faster team than Western Michigan, and they're using it to their advantage so far, not taking much time to transition from defense to offense and uh, powering to the rim as much as they can. And Johnson with the first free throw attempt, no good. In the first exhibition, in the exhibition game against Northwood, Michigan crushed them by 51 points winning 97 to 46 but what really what really killed Michigan in that game was their free throw shooting shooting around 50% mm -hmm. as Johnson makes the second free throw there one of two from the line Michigan up 8 nothing now 745 left in the first quarter Western Michigan with the ball driving in the middle of the middle, middle of the court sets back to the top of the key and three point attempt is no good Johnson with the rebound bring the ball up the court and she is at the top of the key pass it down to Nas Hillman Nas Hillman Blocked as she goes up for the two-point attempt from the right block. And that's a rare time where you see Nas Hillman get stuffed at the, uh, in the post like that. Usually she's able to outpower her defender, but not that time. And we have Dilk taking the ball out from the baseline. Pass to Johnson. Johnson with the left hook going from the left side, from the right side to the left side, and it is good. 10-0 Michigan. Western Michigan now bringing the ball up the court as Wool passes it to Walker on the right wing. Ken Ray Johnson defending. Brown now taking over after the screen and Brown is called for the foul. Or it is an off-ball foul called on Ken Ray Johnson. Uh, yeah, Michigan playing really ag aggressive def defense thus far. You see Kim barnes Rico animated on the sideline putting her hands up as if to mirror what she wants her defenders to do. Uh, so far it's working out pretty well with the score being 10-0. Bailey taking the ball up for Western Michigan from the baseline, passes the top of the top of the key, and it is an and one. No, it is not an and one for Will, but Will would be going to the line. Foul on Haley Brown. That ball was in and out of the basket, hitting every single part of the cylinder. Uh, yeah, that was the first good offensive possession by the Broncos. Uh, got the move inside, wasn't able to finish as a uh, Will hits the first one, but. They, that was the first possession where they were able to penetrate the Michigan defense. Let's see if they could keep doing that. And Layla Amori Wool was the second leading scorer on last year's Western Michigan team, averaging 12 points a game, bringing in two so far. Is the first two points for Western Michigan here today. And Amy Dilk now at the top of the key, and it is a foul on Wool. And we have 21 seconds left on the shot clock, seven minutes on the game clock, 10 to two Michigan leads. You'd like to see the Wolverines just keep doing what they're doing thus far. Obviously, the score is 10-2, to 2 and they're 
just clearly a more athletic, stronger, and faster team than Western Michigan. They're using that to their advantage. Johnson at the top of the key gets two defenders on her. Brown gets the ball, and it's a travel. Looking to fake going to the left, then going to the right, but she picked up her pivot foot. I personally didn't see the travel on that play, but uh, I guess the ref is always right. And now it is Western Michigan. Bailey is bringing the ball up the court. She's on the right wing, pass to the left wing to Walker. Walker to Mobley. Mobley to the top of the key. Bailey with the ball, pass back to Walker. Walker pass to Wool. Wool on the left baseline. Haley Brown sizing her up, and it is a steal by Dilk. Dilk looking for someone to pass to, dribbling on the right side of uh, right side of the sideline, and that is a travel or a carry. Scratch that. That's a carry by Amy Dilk. Another turnover, turnover nonetheless. There that was something something funky about that play. Yeah. You knew it was either travel or double dribble. Took a quick hesitation, thought about passing, went up for the shot instead, but she couldn't keep her dribbling set. And Western Michigan ball with Wool on the right right wing, sizing up Haley Brown. Pass back to Bailey. Bailey to Mobley. Back to Bailey on the left wing. Nine seconds left on the shot clock. Tries to get it in, but it is knocked out by Nas Hillman. And it'll remain Western Michigan ball as it goes out of bounds. Just suffocating defense from the Wolverines so far. Every pass the Broncos try to throw is being cut off, and they can't seem to get inside. That was the case in the Northwood game with Michigan nearing double digits in steals and just getting their hands in the passing lanes at all times. And we have our first sub of the game as Isabel Verjao, the freshman from Brazil, is checking in for Haley Brown. This gives Michigan a lot of size with Isabel Verjao, come, with Verjao listed at 6'4", but if you ask her, she'll say she's 6'5". <laughs> uh, beside Nas Hillman, who's 6'2". And the tallest player on Western Michigan is 6'1", so, or 6'2", excuse me. So I don't believe they'll, they'll be able to contend. And as I was speaking, that's a turnover on the inbound pass by Western Michigan. That's one thing about the Wolverines. If you're hitting, the sh if you're hitting your outside shots, you'll beat them. But no one's going to be, not, or not many teams will be able to outmuscle them down low. That's right. And that's a kickball as Amy Dilk tries to get it into Nas Hillman on the right elbow. It'll remain Michigan ball after the turnover by Western Michigan on the inbounds pass. And Johnson bringing the ball out on the right sideline, pass to Dilk on the right wing. And back to Johnson on the right wing, pass to Verjao, top of the key. Robbins has the ball on the left wing, and three-second call on Nas Hillman. That's three straight turnovers for the Wolverines. Still, the score is 10 to 2 because their defense has been so good, but they got to clean that up. And now it is Western Michigan ball, bringing the ball up the court, swinging it around. Walker with the ball on the left wing. Robbins against her. Robbins playing her tight and blocks it, but Western Michigan with the rebound, and she goes up with Verjao all over her, and she gets it over Verjao. That was Mobley with the two points. Amy Dilk now bringing the ball up the court, pass to Robbins. Robbins on the right wing. Cross-court pass overhead, and Johnson corrals it. And that's another turnover. That's a charge on a Kenray Johnson. That is four straight on Michigan. And we have another sub, another freshman, Michelle Cedor, coming in for a Kenray Johnson. Cedor is the second all-time leading scorer from New Jersey, in the state of New Jersey. Very impressive. So Michigan's looking for her to help with the scoring off the bench. This Michigan team, they don't really have one main score. It's everyone's going to be chipping in. Right, and um, they're leading, uh, uh, yeah. They, they re they're returning their three leading scorers, but they don't have one that's that much higher than the others. So it's an equal effort on this team. And Western Michigan with the back cut and stripped and out of bounds off of Western Michigan, it looks like. And it is now Nas Hillman taking the ball out of bounds. Amy Dilk bringing the ball up. Amy Dilk passes to Robbins on the left wing. Verjao gets the ball, posting up. The turnaround jumper on the left block. And she is on the board with her first two points of the regular season. And Mich Western Michigan turns the ball over, an errant pass by Bailey. And it is Dilk bringing the ball up past the C-door in the, left, in the right, uh, right corner. On the right wing now, pass up to Nas Hillman. 
She's on the deep right wing and is a foul. A foul on Mobley who is guarding Verjao on the right block. That is an absolutely beautiful move by Verjao on that last possession. Uh, spun to her left, her weak, her weak hand and put the shot off the backboard. Um, beautiful post move. Like to see more of that as play continues. I think thus far the Wolverines have done a really good job of playing good defense. They've only given up four points. Uh, they haven't really allowed for that much penetration into their uh, paint by Western Michigan, but they need to clean up the turnovers. They had four turnovers in a row at one point just a few possessions ago. That can't happen against any team. And if you do that against really good teams, you definitely won't win because they will capitalize on it. Luckily, the Broncos didn't, but Michigan needs to clean that up as the season goes on. And a key last game again in the exhibition against Northwood was the rebounding advantage that Michigan held when they they won the the game on the glass with a 44 to 25 edge. And in the game today, Michigan is winning five to one in that in that regard. Not even a, not even allowing a defensive rebound for Western Michigan. That may be attributed to the four turnovers, but Michigan has one offensive rebound and four defensive rebounds, whereas Western Michigan only has that one offensive rebound on the block off of the Robins, off of the off of Robins' hand. Right, like I said, the Wolverines are made up of mostly forwards, um, very big, very strong forwards. S very similar to the men's team, you're not going to be able to out-muscle them in the paint at all. You, you're not going to be able to overpower them with size. When you get to play a team like UConn or Baylor, obviously they'll probably be outsized, but I feel like most teams in the Big Ten, they're going to have the size advantage, and if those teams hit the outside shots, then so be it. But you're not going to be able to beat them inside. And with the buzzer sounding and the teams getting out of their huddles, we are going to resume play in the first quarter with 429 remaining Michigan leading 12 to 4 each team has four turnovers in the past two minutes and 59 seconds so call it three minutes each team has four turnovers but the difference is Michigan has been hitting their shots when they don't when they aren't turning the ball over making four of their last five field goals and they're also capitalizing on the Broncos turnovers. The Broncos are not capitalizing on the Wolverine turnovers. That's right, shooting one of six. That won't cut it. And now Dilk passing the ball out of bounds on the baseline. Pass to a Kenre, or that is Robbins in the middle of the key. Good, two points for her, 14 to four Michigan. And it is Bailey bringing the ball up for Western Michigan, getting the screen from Wool now on the right wing, going right to left. And Mobley bringing the ball against Verizhao. Pass out to Bailey. Bailey shoots, but before the shot, there was an, a moving screen by Mobley. Mobley missed all of last season. She is a redshirt senior now for Western Michigan. She missed the season due to a pregnancy. That's very interesting. It is. She was their leading scorer in 2017, so she was missed dearly last year. And looking to make an impact on the team this year as Michigan brings the ball up. Dilk passed to Hillman on the right elbow and Hillman passed to Verizhao on the left corner and the three is no good as Western Michigan's pushing it after getting the rebound and pulls up, it, pulling up is Walker who does not hit and it is Nas Hillman passing to Dilk after she gets the rebound. Dilk trying to thread the needle but intercepted by Bailey. Bailey bring the ball up now on the left wing. Passes to Wool. Wool dribbling on the right side. And back out to Bailey. Or, yes, Bailey misses the three. And it is rebounded by Dilk. They just can't get a rebound, Western Michigan. And Michigan in transition now. Pulling up is Robbins. Rebound out to the three-point line is Seedor from three. And those are the points Michigan's looking for off the bench from their no number two guard. Number two player off the bench. Cedor able to get that opportunity off the offensive rebound by Michigan. Um, rebound, the, the rebounding is just spectacular. They're out rebounding the Broncos now 8-2 uh, to two 
And the Broncos have yet to get an offensive rebound, which is the reason why Michigan has been creating a lot of chances, second chances on their offensive possessions, and why the Broncos aren't getting any on their offensive possessions, and Michigan's able to run out on the transition and score quick points. And there was a shooting foul on that last possession. It is Wool going to the line for two foul foul from Verjao. It looked like she got ball on that shot, but referee says otherwise. And the Michigan has a Michigan team has a substitution now. Danielle Roush coming in for Amy Dilk. Roush didn't get much playing time last year, but in the exhibition she made her presence felt, having six assists in that game. She was the only one that didn't get on the scoreboard with points, but she did she did score she did help out her teammates score. And she got the ball poked loose, but it is out of bounds, and Michigan will retain possession. Taking the ball out on the right sideline is Nas Hillman. And Bailey is all over Danielle Roush. Danielle Roush, actually a fellow classmate of mine, as is Nas Hillman. And Nas Hillman passes it in to Michelle Sidor. Michelle Sidor taking the ball to the left wing, pass to Robbins, pass back to Sidor, pass to Nas Hillman, swinging it around. Now on the right wing, pass it to Roush. Roush pass to Robbins. Robbins misses the post up from the right block and is rebounded by Waters on Western Michigan. Western Michigan pulling up from the right wing and it is no good with Robbins getting the rebound. Robbins looking for someone to pass to. Dribbling down the court. Coast to coast maybe? No. Pass back to Roush. Roush on the top of the key. Pass to Verjao. Verjao give and go to Robbins and Robbins misses the shot attempt but she is fouled going for two to the line now. Great ball movement by the Wolverines on that play. Uh, you thought Varejao might try to spin a post move there, but she passes it right back to Robbins for the uh, easy lay. What, what would have been an easy layup, although she was fouled. Great sportsmanship by Wool also, picking Robbins up as she was to hit the floor. And Michigan's leading scorer from last year, Nas Hillman, is now out of the game with Emily Kaiser coming in. Emily Kaiser is the second tallest on this Michigan team, saying six foot three and the sophomore. And now it is Robbins missing the first attempt. Again, a common theme for Michigan in that exhibition. And making the second. Michigan now shooting 50% from the line, 2 of 4 on the day. Western Michigan's Bailey bringing the ball up the court. Weaving around her is Wool. Wool driving uh, down the right sideline, right wing, and it is tipped out of bounds, but they say it is off of Western Michigan, so it's Michigan basketball. I don't know what the deal is with Michigan and free throws. It seems that neither basketball team is able to make them, no matter what adjustments they make. And now it is Roush calling for a screen, getting one, and passing to Verjao on the right elbow. Verjao looking for someone to pass to. Pass to... It is Sidor uh, from the corner, dribbling baseline and scoring on the layup, getting back on defense, not letting Waters go anywhere. And now it is Bailey bringing the ball up the court for Western Michigan. Pass out to Walker. Walker trying to make something happen with Robbins on her. Pass to the left wing. And Sidor, or that is Roush, is on her and trying to cross up. And it is a foul with the body. That is Sidor bumping Waters on the three-point attempt. I don't agree with that call. I think that's a bit of a touch foul. Uh, but even, even so, the Wolverines defense is just so suffocating. I mean, the Broncos have six points, and there's a minute left in the first quarter. That's absurd. And shooting 11% from the field. Pretty much all their points coming from free throws. As, as she misses as, the first. As she misses the first. And that's their first miss of the day from the line, four or five now big difference is Michigan's making their shots and Western Michigan isn't. Michigan now 8 of 13 from the field. Western Michigan 1 of 9. And Waters just made the second of the three attempts. 20 to 7 Michigan now with 116 remaining in the first quarter as Waters sinks the second of the three. Or sorry, the third of the three. Western Michigan already trapping by the way on their offensive side of the court. And Roush passes to Cedor, back to Roush, back to Kaiser now on the left wing near the top of the key. And Cedor on the top of the key, pass to Robbins, Robbins left wing, faking, now going to the right. And it is Verjao with the offensive rebound going up and missing. Verjao rushed the put back there, she should have had an easy basket. 
And that's going to be a blocking foul. Western Michigan's Waters was dribbling, trying to drive on the right, from the right wing, and it was Robbins defending. He tried to get in front of her, but wasn't fully able to. And the ref said that she was referee said that she was still moving, deeming it a blocking foul. You'll never get that call as long as she was very clearly still moving her feet. Although she might have been in position, it was maybe a millisecond between her movement and the contact. So you hear a lot of boos from the fans, but it's the right call. And Waters at the line now, making the first and proving the band wrong as they chant, you will miss. Or Schaefer, excuse me, Schaefer is at the line now, sinking both. Now Michigan is pushing the ball up the court. Robbins, the ball at the left wing, going from left wing to right wing. Now the top of the key. Passes to Roush on the right wing. Roush to Kaiser, top of the key. Berejau posting up, calling for it, gets it, spinning, and goes up and under, and one! Oh, wow, going up and under to the defender and getting the, getting the foul call, sinking the shot from two feet out. I've seen beautiful post moves by Verjao in almost every possession that she's touched the ball. The pump fake there, then going under and finishing through the contact, that's huge, especially by a freshman. Uh, she's definitely made an impact so far in this game as she makes the free throw. Friendly bounce. Yes, uh, but the Broncos only have one field goal in the quarter. Eight of their ten points have come off the foul shot as it is Schaefer calmly I mean the ball with the game clock less than the shot clock with less time than the shot clock 13, 13 seconds remaining so they don't need to shoot before time, time goes and they do and it's an offensive rebound by Western Michigan goes up and it is good two seconds remaining let's see if Michigan can get off a shot and she's C door tries to get one off from past half court but she misses and she didn't get it off anyway as it is Michigan leading 23 to 12 at the end of the first quarter it's now. funny that um the Broncos first offensive rebound in that last possession actually led to their second field goal of the game yes uh, but an underrated point here is the score is only 23 to 12 a nine point game or sorry an 11 point game however it feels like the Wolverines are up 30 right now They've just been dominating every facet of the game except for the uh, free throw shooting. And if Michigan can keep that going, just the rebounding and keeping their hands in the passing lane, this game will be over by halftime. Right. Um, obviously, their defense has just been too good for the Broncos to beat because the Broncos have two field goals in 10 minutes. Uh, like we said, eight of their 12 points have come off of free throws. They haven't really been able to create either. It's not like they're just not hitting their shots. They haven't gotten really any to begin with. And then the Wolverines have been capitalizing on all the turnovers the Broncos have made, while the Broncos haven't capitalized on one turnover that the Wolverines made, which was at one point, four possessions in a row. And it is just Robbins leading Michigan in scoring right now, playing all 10 minutes in that first quarter. She was the only one of the starters to do so with Verjao playing six minutes, coming off the bench. Robbins has eight points, Cedor has five, two of two shooting, and Verjao coming with five as well, with two shots and one free throw. I really liked what I saw from Verjao in that stretch. Very mature choices with the basketball. Uh, hit her free throw that she took, and just really spectacular post moves. I think she is going to be a great asset for these Wolverines, and they have a lot to look forward to. Yes, indeed. An interesting fact I came across was that the first ever women's basketball game played at Chrysler Center was in 1974, and it was actually Michigan against Western Michigan, with Western Michigan beating Michigan 54-28 to in that game. And I don't, I don't, I don't foresee us seeing that type of game again today with Western Michigan winning by 26 points in that one in '74. But maybe it's going to be Michigan this time around winning by that margin. Yeah, the Michigan Wolverines are pretty good at Chrysler. Last year, this team went 13 at one, 13 and one in Chrysler, and has won thir at least 13 games at home in each of the last five seasons. 
with Kim Barnes Rico holding a 97 and 27 record at Chrysler Center. A great mark bring this Michigan team back to relevance. And now Western Michigan taking the ball out and passing it in. Wool dribbling from the left uh, left wing pass out to Walker for three on the left wing. That's their first three point make of the day. Now it is Dilk bringing the ball to the court, picking up her dribble at the left wing, passing to Cedor. Cedor passes to Hillman who checked back in the game at the top of the key. Pass back to Dilk. Hillman getting Dilk the screen. Dilk picks up the ball at the top of the key. Pass to Verizal looking for Cedor on the backdoor cut but turns the ball over. Cedor not giving up and trying to get the jump ball and she does diving on the floor. Diving on the floor with Waters. Relentless getting that jump ball and it will remain Michigan ball after the tenacity by Michelle Cedor. Incredible perseverance by Cedor there. They were wrestling on the ground for about five seconds there. Pretty long. It doesn't sound like it but it's a pretty long time. Um, and she automatically came, came out with the, she eventually came out with the jump ball, and now Michigan retains possession. And Dilk passing it from the right side of the basket out of bounds to Isabel Verizhao to Nas Hillman, who's scoring now. Hillman with four points on the day on that layup, going from the left side to the right side of the key. And Western Michigan now two points for Walker step back jumper on the right side. Broncos start line extended. Broncos starting to hit their shots now. And Priscilla Sminge is in the game for Michigan now, passing to Verjao. Now pass to Dilk cross court to Sminge on the left sideline. Dilk now gets the ball on the right wing, driving pull up jumper good from the free throw line. Wolverines give one right back. Going tick for tack here. And it is Western Michigan bring the ball up and wild shot. How did that go in? That wow. was an absolute circus shot. Literally threw that Schaefer straight with the, at the basket. That was, that a, was line a line drive. Yeah, exactly. And Hillman getting the ball now. And we're trading baskets. She goes up with the left hand on the left block, and it's good. Now Western Michigan Schaefer bring the ball up the court. Pass to Walker. Walker on the right wing. And it is... Conkley, Conkley is against Verja posting up, pass, backdoor cut, and it is good for Western Michigan. There is no defense in this second quarter so far. Yeah, really weird. The Wolverines went from playing some of the best defense I've ever seen in a basketball game to virtually no defense at all, and that's why Kim barnes has just called this timeout just two minutes into the quarter. She doesn't like what she's seeing from her team as they've given up baskets on four straight possessions. Uh, they've kind of not, they've kind of lost whatever, however they were playing in the first quarter. She's definitely giving it to them right now. Um, I had the privilege of hearing Kim Barnes Rico speak in one of my classes. And um, she just has so much passion for the game. She knows that it's that her players are just kids but she also knows that they need to work hard and she's got to set them up for life after basketball one of the most interesting people to listen to speak i i uh, wrote her a thank you note never got a response unfortunately but she was honestly one of the most interesting and genuine people i've listened to, i've ever listened to speak she really cares a lot about this team and she's totally turned around this program going into her eighth this being her eighth season as the wolverine head coach and Western Michigan cutting the lead to eight points in those first three minutes of that second quarter it is Michigan 29, Western Michigan 21 now with 7.56 left in the second quarter. Western Michigan hitting four shots early on in the second quarter after only hitting two all of the first quarter. That's obviously not a trend you like to see. What, what did you what did you see was the difference between that first quarter defense and that second quarter defense for Michigan? I can't really pin it honestly because it's been so little. It's only been over two minutes. But the main thing that stood out to me for both teams is a faster pace of play. They seem to just be interested in trading baskets and not really stopping the other team from scoring. Which if you're Michigan will work because they're winning when they started that. But if you're Western Michigan, that isn't going to work. But that's, that's what's really stood out to me. Uh, they seem to just be kind of throwing it full length, court, back and forth. 
not really playing much defense. Michigan has been hitting their shots though as, as we're going training baskets here. So that's a positive we can take out of this early second quarter. But again, can't win games trading baskets against teams like Western Michigan. As we are back now in the second quarter as Dilk attempts to pass to freshman Maddie Nolan from Zionville, Indiana. And that is out of bounds off of Western Michigan. Tipped out of bounds. Now Nolan taking the ball out, pass to Dilk. Nolan on the right wing now getting the ball back from Dilk. Looking for someone to pass to or a screen. Pass to Dilk in the right corner. Dilk fakes the overhead pass. Pass to Cedor, wrapping around on the right wing. Overhead pass to Kaiser on the left wing. Hillman posting up, calling for the ball, not getting it. Dilk wrapping around on the left wing and missing, but Western Michigan was not able to corral that offensive rebound after they touched the ball, and it goes out of bounds. Michigan ball. I think another reason the scoring might have increased for both sides right now is the ball movement has been much better for both teams so far. And Cedor now with the ball on the left wing. Cedor passes to Dilk on the left wing. Dilk to Nas Hillman, and Nas Hillman charges as that was the plan for Western Michigan's wool all along. She wasn't she wasn't planning on playing defense there. She just wanted to take that charge. And in the in the men's game, there's a new rule about flopping that you get you get a warning, and then if it happens again, then you get a flagrant foul. Do you? Would you like to see that in the women's game? Uh, no, I'm only going to say no because I wouldn't like to see it in the men's game. I think that's kind of a stupid rule. I mean, a, a flop is is so subjective. I mean, there's no way really way to define it. It's not like a travel or double dribble. I don't think it's a good rule. Um, I think they should just let, let them play. And Kaiser spawning up from the top of the key. It is good on the pass from Nolan. And that is a three-pointer for Emily Kaiser. And now Western Michigan pushing the ball up the floor. Schaefer back out to Conkley to Wool on the left wing now. Wool defended by Nas Hillman getting by her, spinning in the key, going up and missing, getting on her own offensive rebound. Knocked out of bounds by Dilk, and it will remain Western Michigan ball. And Verjao coming in for Hillman. Verja is getting a lot of minutes, much more than I expected her to. Hillman with an early two fouls may be the reason why she's coming out of the game this early. And Verja playing defense, getting the block and getting the rebound and fouled while she passed it to Dilk after she got her own blocks, after she got the block and the rebound off of the Michigan, Western Michigan player. She's really been a standout so far. Very, very impressed with what I've seen so far. And Western Michigan now defending Michigan as Robbins calling for the ball, going up, and the one on the right wing, driving to the right block, going up and getting fouled by the Western Michigan player, finishing it off with the layup as Robbins will go to the line to finish off the and one. Another underrated point about Vera Zhao is, yeah, her post moves have been good, and she's been a big body down low on defense, but her court vision is really spectacular. She's been, uh, she has two assists, both of them on beautiful give and goes where she could have easily taken it herself, but gave it up for an easy layup, and I think that's really exciting to see in a young player like her. And Robin sinks the N1 free throw, doing a, a conventional three-point play. And now Western Michigan with the ball as Waters looks for someone to pass to. Passes to the left corner. And Verjao now defending as they enter it to Mobley in the, in the block. On the left block, pulls up from the free throw line. No good. Dilk with the rebound now. Dilk pushing the ball down the floor. Passes to Kaiser. Too low for Kaiser to handle. And is a jump ball as Western Michigan and Michigan dive on the ball. Dilk tried to make that one too perfect. Too cluttered of a zone to thread that perfectly to Kaiser. Uh, I think she should have looked for an option on the uh, wing, but... Michigan had a three-on-one right there. She could have faked to the wing or just thrown it up as Kaiser had the height advantage over any Western Michigan player. Saying eight, six foot three. It's hard for a tall player like that to go down and get the pass and then go up right under the basket. Now Western Michigan getting the ball. Wool at the top of the key defended by Verjao going to the left 
and going to the right now and throws up a wild shot and it is no good and Dilk gets the rebound now pushing the ball up on the right side of the court. Passing Nolan on the right corner. Kaiser on her side now calling for the ball on the block. Pass to Dilk in the corner. Screened by Nolan. Dilk on the wing. Pass to Nolan from the corner for three. Short. No good. But she gets her own rebound back in the corner as she followed her shot and now she's driving and a great pass to Verizhao on the block and no good foul on Verizhao as she goes for the for the rebound. That's her second now as Hillman and Verizhao have two fouls. That's the first quote-unquote mistake I've seen Verizhao made. Very ill-advised shot there. Had her teammates open and then to get the foul on the rebound attempt that you she realistically wasn't going to get, just can't do that. Wolverines could be in trouble having their two Big players with two fouls now. Let's see what Arico, what Barnes Rico does. And it is Mobley now passing to Wool on the left short corner, dribbling and getting the charge call is Emily Kaiser on Mobley. Mobley has two fouls on the day, and Wool has three for Western Michigan. Wool, a popular name we've been calling out, will be coming out of the game now. Wool's been kind of keeping Western Michigan in this game as much as she can. Clearly one of, if not the best players. She's the only player with offensive the offensive rebounds, which the Broncos only have two of. And she has most of the points for the Broncos. Michigan on a 6-0 run in the last 2.30. Verizhao passing to Dilk. Dilk on the right elbow. Goes up and misses. But it is Robbins getting the offensive rebound. Surrounded by two Western Michigan players who try to go for the tie-up but are not successful. And it is Dilk pass, shooting the three from the right wing. And Verizhao getting the offensive rebound and getting fouled in the process. Once again, the resilience on the boards is why the Wolverines are dominating this game. And that was the third personal for Mobley now as she will come out of the game with the next dead ball. Dilk passes it to Verizhao. Verizhao on the right right block going for the hook shot and it is good as she has seven points on the day now. Good for second on the team behind Robbins with 11. Western Michigan calling for the timeout now as it is 37-21. Michigan leads four minutes and three seconds remaining in the second quarter. That's a much needed timeout for Western Michigan. After they traded baskets with the Wolverines for the first few possessions of this quarter, the Wolverines have just gone back to their bread and butter, playing stifling defense, not really giving the Broncos a chance, and they stretched the lead from what was at 1.8, now back to 16, so they doubled that. And Western Michigan's gone cold, missing their last four field goal attempts, a uh, scoring drought of four minutes, over which that time period Michigan has taken advantage going on an 8-0 run bringing that 8 point lead to 16 point lead up 37 to 21 with Verjao and Robbins making most of those points with Kaiser chipping in with that 3 Western Michigan able to do a little bit of damage by getting uh, Hillman and Verjao in, like, in mild foul trouble but they're not there yet if they want to take them out of this game, they have to keep being aggressive down low. And that's the only way I could see them possibly winning, if they take the size away from Michigan. And it's going to be hard to do so with Western Michigan's two biggest players, both on the bench with three fouls. And Western Michigan now with the ball. Pass to Conkley, top of the key. Bailey with the ball, and Dilk is called for the foul off ball. And that is Dilk's first of the day. The fouls from Michigan are really that was spread on around. Oh, it was on Robbins. Yeah. Okay. So that I was is. looking at Dilk. I didn't see her. Yeah, Dilk was kind of complaining yeah. a little bit, but that, that foul was on Robbins. Robbins second of the day, as Western Michigan takes the ball out on the baseline on the right side of the hoop, and now on the left wing, pass back out to Waters. Waters left wing, Cedor guarding her. Back out to to Bailey. Bailey top of the key shoots with seven seconds left on the shot clock. Clank, no good. Dilk with the rebound, and she's pushing the ball up the court now. Pass up to Robbins on the left wing. Robbins looking for someone. Verjao posting up, and she has Dilk in the corner. Dilk pass to Verjao over the Western Michigan defender. Pass out to Cedor on the right right corner, and in and out. That is no good. And Dilk trying to get the steal, knocks it out of Western Michigan's uh, Western Michigan players' hands, but out of bounds. 
Western Michigan players really being fooled by the fans' fake 3-2-1 chance, the second time they've fallen for this now. Yes, as they attempted uh, an ill-advised shot with seven seconds left on the shot clock there in the last possession. And that was a double dribble. And it was a late call, but it was a double dribble by Bailey as she was attempting to pass to the corner to Waters, or scratch that, that was Fletcher she was attempting to pass it to, but she had already dribbled and picked up her dribble. So you're not allowed to do that. And it is now Michigan ball, Cedor on the right wing calling for Kaiser to go out to the three-point line at the top of the key and Roush with the ball and three-second call on Isabel Verjao. And a turnover for Michigan there. That was their first of the second quarter. That's a good change from the first quarter as they had, I believe, six in the first quarter. So only one so far with the quarter almost over is pretty good. And Western Michigan misses the three-point attempt with Cedor getting the rebound and bringing the ball up the court, pushing it. Uh, Kaiser getting the ball now from, from Berja. What a great pass, and Kaiser is able to finish it over to her defender on the right side of the basket. Absolutely beautiful pass by Verja inside. Looked like she was squaring up to shoot and just lasered it in there for Kaiser, who was able to finish the easy layup. And Waters now getting past Cedor, but not getting past Kaiser. Kicks it out to Bailey. Bailey on the left wing, dribbling to the right side, and past the defending Roush and good for two points. 39-23 Michigan leads. And Jess Robbins dribbling now, passing it out to Michelle Cedar on the top of the key. Roush passing it to Kaiser on the left block, going up and missing. She is short as Bailey gets the rebound for Western Michigan. Bailey dribbling past Roush. Roush, good defense. And that's a travel on Western Michigan as she passed it back out to Fletcher trying to get past Emily Kaiser. And unsuccessful there as she's called for the travel. Defense continues to be really good from the Wolverines. It was lacking a little at the beginning of this quarter and you wondered what was wrong with them. But they've seemed to get back to their roots and continue to play tough defense, force the Broncos to turn the ball over. And now Roush picks up her dribble at the top of the key. Pass back out to Robbins. Verjao calling for her on the block, but doesn't get it. Roush, top of the key for three. Good. Splash. That was water right there as Western Michigan bring the ball to the court fast in the left corner. And now to the left block, Isabel Verjao defending. Up and under is no good as Verjao gets the block and the rebound. And now she passes back to Roush. Roush dribbling from the right side to the left side. And Cedor gets the ball on the left wing. Back to Roush. Roush cross-court pass to Robbins. Robbins on the right wing. Pass her defender. And misses the, misses the layup attempt on the right block uh, on the runner. And Western Michigan now bring the ball up the court. It is Bailey back out for three. No good. And Roush with the rebound. Roush is a bit of a floor general out there. She's commanding the offense really well so far. Verjao gets it short corner on the right side, no good. And Conkley with the rebound for Western Michigan. Pass to Bailey now. Bailey, pass to Walker. Walker taking her time, letting the offense settle in as the clock rolls down. 17 seconds left on the game clock, 15 on the shot clock. 10 seconds now on the shot clock as Cedor trying to make her do something. And she's on the right wing now, going up. And that was a travel. We have six seconds remaining for Michigan to up their lead of 19 and try to go into the half on a high note, or a higher note than their already high note. And it is now Cedor on the left sideline. Three seconds, two, one, and no good off the side of the backboard. She was able to get past the defenders, but just couldn't get a good look at the basket with the amount of time she had. Uh, score at halftime is 42-23 in favor of Michigan. Zach, what do you like that you've seen so far in the first half? In the first quarter, Michigan was really fouling a lot, and I wanted to see improvement in the second quarter, which I really did, as Michigan didn't, as Western Michigan didn't go to the line one time in that second quarter, and Michigan went on a run there and finished off the second quarter on a 13-2 run over those last seven minutes. So continuing that good defense that we saw in the first quarter that kind of 
slipped up at the beginning of the second, but got back in got back in the in the rhythm of it after those first two minutes after the timeout by Kim Barnes Rico. Right, I think that timeout did wonders for the Wolverines. At that point, Western Michigan had cut the lead to eight, and they were able to just get back on track, and now they sit with a 19-point lead. Not many field goals for the Broncos. In fact, only seven. Seven shots made over 20 minutes is spectacular. The Wolverines doing their thing, playing a good post game inside with all the size they have. Verja has been spectacular, amazing court vision on her assists and great post moves, very mature decisions with the basketball. What are you looking to see in the second half? In the second half, I just want to keep seeing this run and gun offense. I, I really like how this Michigan team isn't one player on this Michigan team doesn't dominate the ball. Like they're they're all they're all passing it to each other, all feeding each other. It's it's everyone getting involved. As Robbins is leading the way with 11 points, but everyone else, Verjao has seven, Hillman has six, and Cedor and Kaiser both have five. So everyone's involved here. I think the Wolverines should easily coast to win this game knock on wood because you never know but if they keep playing the way they're playing there's no reason they shouldn't come out with the win here what do you think as the uh, michigan's men basketball team is exiting the arena now after seeing that first half domination and again michigan leading 42 23 13 30 remaining 13 minutes 30 seconds remaining until we're back in the third quarter do you have any Anything else to say about what, what you would like to see in the second half from the Michigan team? I mean, I think we covered it all. I'd like to see good post play on offense, uh, tenacious defense, and I'd like to see them stay resilient on the boards. And I think with that, we will see you in just a short few minutes for the second half.
and welcome back to second half action of number 25 Michigan versus the unranked Western Michigan Broncos. This is Zach Gorson back on play-by-play. -play. Now along me is Ryan Buckman on color commentary. How are you doing today, Ryan? Ah, pretty good. Uh, it was pretty good first half there. Uh, they were slow bit slow there towards towards the middle, the start of the second quarter, but they started to really pick it up there at the end. I think uh, uh, it was a lot less turnovers that we saw at the end of the half compared to the first part of the uh, second quarter. Yes, Michigan with a 19-point lead coming into the second half now. Western Michigan cut it to eight points at one time, but Michigan then went on a 13-2 run in the last seven minutes of that second quarter to extend the lead to 19 points. Michigan 42, Western Michigan 23. Michigan scoring coming from a lot of people. We have uh, we have Kayla Robbins pouring in 11 points, Nas Hillman with six, and is Isabel Verjao with seven. So coming from everywhere, these 42 points. Yeah, it definitely was, I think, in that what Michigan started to do there at the end was kind of start to open it up a little bit down there and getting a little bit more physical was definitely a key to pulling away with a little bit of a ex extended lead right here to start the second half. And now Michigan going from right to left. Nas Hillman taking the ball out. Dilk passes to Robbins. Robbins to Hillman. Hillman on the top of the key now back to Dilk. Dilk on the left wing dribbling to the center and it is Johnson for three. Johnson, we haven't heard much of her Late in that second, in late in that second quarter, and she missed there on that three-point attempt. Western Michigan uh, ball now. The top of the key is Bailey. Bailey looking for Walker, but Walker cutting, and Michigan on the fast break turns the ball over. It was, it was John, or it was Robbins looking for Dilk from right to left, overthrowing the ball. And Western Michigan now in the front court. Getting the screen and passing the ball is Bailey to Conkley. Conkley passed down to Mobley. Mobley didn't get much time in the first quarter due to the fouls. She has three, but she's back on the floor now. Pass out to, Mo uh, to Bailey. Bailey pass out to, th to, who was it, Walker for three who missed it. And Dilk now with the, offense with the defensive rebound. Driving the ball up the court to Nas Hillman, top of the key. Dilk right wing now getting the screen from Hillman Hillman gets a dump off from Dilk and it is good on the right block for two Western Michigan ball now as it is Bailey on the left wing crossing over looking for someone to pass to goes to the corner now pass to pass to Wool Wool on the left wing defended by Haley Brown Haley Brown with no points, no field goal attempts in the first half, but make, making her mark felt defensively with a steal. And Robbins defending the three-point attempt there, and it was no good, and a foul after Johnson got the, got the rebound. Western Michigan fouled her. Western Michigan dealing with a little bit of foul trouble here as... Their two biggest players in Mobley and Wool each have three fouls, and then Walker picking up her second right there is Michigan ball now. Johnson on the right wing. Pass to Hillman. Hillman, top of the key, looking for someone to pass to. Dilk, spot up, left wing, and that's an air ball. Dilk, now one for six on the day from the field, over three from three with two points, but she does have she does have six rebounds and three assists. Western Michigan ball now as Bailey dribbles in and no good on the layup attempt from the left side from the left block. Dilk with the rebound, her seventh of the day as an errant pass to Robbins, but Robbins saves it on the right sideline. Robbins now in the right corner, cross court pass to Johnson. Johnson fakes the shot, drives baseline, air ball no good, but, John, but Robbins with the rebound on the other side of the basket on the right block gets the rebound but gets it stolen away as Western Michigan now pushing the ball up the court three point attempt is no good Dilk with another rebound wrap around ball and pass to Johnson on the fast break left hand layup is good 
46-23 lead for Michigan. Western Michigan ball now as they try to enter it into the post and it is a foul on Nas Hillman. Nas Hillman didn't get so much time in that first half, 14 minutes, still a good amount of time, but didn't, didn't play much in that second quarter because of foul trouble, now with three on the day. Western Michigan taking the ball out on the baseline and using her right arm to kind of wrap around Haley Brown and she is called for the foul there after converting the basket which won't count as it is a foul on Wool and now it's Michigan bringing the ball up with Dilk on the right on the right wing going to the middle of the court pass to Robbins now to Brown to, to is that yes it is it is Johnson on the left block Converting the uh, up and under for two. Western Michigan's Wool now on the left wing. Pass to Mobley at top of the key. Bailey on the right wing now. Getting the screen from Mobley. Spot up three. Clank, no good. Johnson pushing the ball up on the long rebound. Pass up to Robbins. Robbins on the right side. And good from the right block on that layup. 4.50 to 23 lead Michigan now as it is a timeout Western Michigan Western Michigan trying to stop the bleeding here and Michigan making that 8 point halftime lead a 27 point lead with 6, eight, six minutes 18 seconds remaining in the third quarter of 50 to 23 so far the uh, turnover battle has been the issue I think for both teams but more so for Western Michigan because they are on obviously the losing end right now of a 50-23 deficit. I think so far going forward I think Michigan really got to still limit their turnover battle. You know not just for this game but for future, future games as well. I think uh, being able to control the ball at will it will be so huge for them down the stretch. Yes, Michigan has 11 turnovers to Western Michigan's 15, but they're also tied in the foul column, which we want to see some improvement here in the second half from Michigan, trying to still get in the passing lanes, but not not rack up those fouls so that they can stay that their key players can stay in the game, unlike the Western Michigan players with Bailey and Mobley and Wool, or excuse me, not not Bailey. Bailey has zero fouls, but. Mobley and Wool each have three, and Walker has two. All, all key players and key contributors to this Western Michigan squad. Yeah, they, I think I want, that's what makes them, I think, pretty stable as a team. But I, it's just, I think the talent level for Michigan is just so much higher right now than Western Michigan. Uh, you can see it right now, the stamina from uh, Michigan players are just outdoing the Western Michigan players right now. They are just lighting it up down there and I think Western Michigan you can see how they're getting a little bit tired there especially <laughs> as we get later into this game. Yes and Michigan players you speak on stamina they've gotten a little bit of a break here with a Ken Ray Johnson and Haley Brown each only having eight minutes this game due to the fact that they each have two fouls getting in foul trouble early but it's a Ken Ray Johnson scoring seven points on three of five shooting but Haley Brown not even attempting a shot three-pointer or a free throw zero points on the board for her with two fouls a turnover she is in the positive stat column of contributing one assist to this Michigan team today yeah Kayla Robbins has definitely done a great job tonight she has been com in complete control in terms of points right now which says 13 points and it is Vera Zhao in Hillman out for this Michigan team as Western Michigan has the ball bringing up the court now and Walker has the ball on the left wing Pump fake, up, no good. Verjao with the rebound. Right when she comes in, she gets a board. Back out to Dilk now, pushing it. Hey, Haley Brown attempts her first shot of the day, and it's good. Haley Brown getting the dump off from Dilk there and converting the shot. Dilk has four assists now on the day. As Western Michigan gets fouled going up, and that's going to be on... Isabel Verjao, that's going to be her third of the day. Scratch that, her second foul of the day. As Western Michigan's Walker is at the line now. 
if it's been one good thing tonight for Western Michigan, it's been their free throw shooting. It's been almost pretty on point, almost perfect. Yes, 10 of 11 from the line now after those two makes. So if, if Michigan could take one, one thing from Western Michigan's game, it would be the free throw shooting. As Michigan has the ball now with Robbins dribbling in and cutting baseline or in the middle of the court there and losing it, but it's off of the Western Michigan players' hands and it's going to be Michigan ball taking the ball out from under the basket on the baseline, Amy Doe. Amy Doe passes to Verjao and Verjao hiding behind Robbins there and missing the, missing the shot on the inbounds pass. Western Michigan pushing the ball up after they get the rebound. And Walker passes out to Bailey. Bailey to Mobley. Mobley posting up on Verjao and it's good, just muscling her way down there. Verjao has a height advantage, but Mobley is a little thicker. And it is Michigan ball now. Verjao to Dilk in the right corner. Haley Brown posting up on the right block. Spinning, losing, and Western Michigan ball as is ripped from Haley Brown's hands. Western Michigan ball now. Haley, uh, excuse me, Bailey passes it to Walker. Walker passes it to Bailey or attempts to, and it is a foul on Dilk as she dives for the ball, but that's a controversial call there. Yeah, I would definitely say so. I think that was a just a loose ball. Just let him play on right there. As it appeared, Dilk was going to get her second steal of the day, but instead called for her first foul of the day. Especially if you're an official, you got to really give credit to the opposing team trying to get the steal there, making a nice play. you got to give them credit to at least try to go after it. But And now we have a timeout, media timeout, with four, 40 second, four minutes and 47 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Michigan leads 52, and Western Michigan Broncos down with 27 points. What have you seen from this Michigan team that made that either they made an adjustment or there's something that's different from the first half? But I think they've done. I think they've just continued what they were doing that first half, and uh, if not what they did at the start of that first quarter, they've done here at the start of the second half. Just kind of push it really early, try to get Western Michigan off balance and uh, hopefully force them into making mistakes. And so far, I think Michigan's defense just keeps getting better and better throughout this game. They just are creating more walls and harder pass lanes for Western Michigan right now. That's three blocks and five steals on the day for Michigan as opposed to one block for Western Michigan. Mich Western Michigan does have five steals matching Michigan's output. But West, the Broncos do have 15 turnovers compared to Michigan's 12. Each team high in their turnover column, but Michigan playing good defense, causing those 15 turnovers by Western Michigan. And something that we highlighted in that Northwood exhibition game last week was the rebounding advantage that Michigan had with the 44 to 25 advantage on the glass. That has translated to the regular season as Michigan is leading the rebounding advantage, has a rebounding advantage, 28 to 14, doubling the output by Western Michigan. If I have to say one thing about Michigan tonight, I think getting those close shots to fall are so big that I think they missed a couple of big opportunities there that this game could probably essentially be over if they got a couple more of those to fall, but so far they're doing a good job tonight. And we're back from the break as Western Michigan's Wool will be taking the ball out on the left sideline. Western Michigan going from left to right now. And she passes it into Bailey. Bailey, defended by Dilk, pass to Wool, defended by Hillman. Hillman contesting the three point shot, and it is no good. Rebound to Kenray Johnson, pushing the ball. Oh, that is a turnover Ooh. on. A pass that was about 60 feet, and it is Western Michigan now blocked by Isabel Verjao. She said, no, wow. ma'am. That was a heck of a shot block there. As Western Michigan attempted the layup on the fast break after the turnover by Johnson. And Michelle Cedor, Cedor is coming in for Dilk, and it is Western Michigan now on the right block, on the right elbow, and Nas Hillman defending and no good 
off of Western Michigan was the hook shot by Wool. And Nas Hillman taking the ball up for Michigan now. Pass up to Johnson taking the ball up with Dilk out of the game. One thing I might, I've seen as they progressed is that Michigan hasn't taken a lot of three-pointers, too. They, they are shooting 36% from three, but only 11 attempts on the day as Hillman misses the hook shot and Verjao trying to get the block in transition, but Western Michigan converts on the missed shot attempt by Hillman. And Johnson bring the ball to the court and it is stolen by Western Michigan. Johnson trying to get a block and Western Michigan does not hit and Western Michigan gets the offensive rebound and finishes through contact. Foul on Johnson, two points for Western Michigan with one more coming at the line. And we have Emily Kaiser coming in for Michigan and out comes Isabel Verjao who now has three fouls on the day. Yeah, I think uh, just got a little bit uh, <laughs> too uh, aggressive right there for Michigan. They just didn't got ahead of themselves, and they were able, they got a turnover from it. And it is Walker at the line now. Walker not having a great day. Three of fourteen from the field, and one of six from three, missing her only free throw of the day so far. And Johnson getting the rebound, and that's a charge. Walker has been just all over oh, Johnson, now and now Johnson gets teed up as Walker is just in Johnson's head. She's She's been all over Johnson as she's taken over the ball handling duties since Dilk has gone out of the game, creating a loose ball and then stealing it and then getting in her head there, causing the technical foul on a Ken Ray Johnson. I believe that's the end of the day for her. Fortunately, I think that was her, fir her fifth personal. Yes. A Ken Ray Johnson with that technical foul, adding to that charge call, has five fouls. She is out of the game with Amy Dilk coming in. And Walker is at the line now for two, making the first and making the second. Got to control your emotions there down the stretch. <laughs> yes. I and, know. And frustrated, now, but. now Western Michigan on a 10-0 run for themselves over the last two minutes and 12 seconds, cutting that 29-point lead into a 19-point deficit or 29 point lead for Michigan now a 19 point lead for Michigan as Amy Dilk now defends Bailey and it is Michelle Cedor guarding Walker Walker misses the shot and it is Robbins with the rebound Robbins now is being defended by Bailey who is harassing her and Cedor catches the ball in the right corner and no good and Robbins with the rebound in the post and goes up and fouled by the Western Michigan Ow. player. Almost looked like a clean block, but I think it was a little too much contact before that was what caused the foul. And that's going to be the first personal on Bailey. Bailey has a lot of energy for Western Michigan and is just all over the Michigan ball handler when they're at the top of the key there. It really shows. I mean, I think it affects on her whole team as well. And that's another missed free throw for Michigan. If the trend keeps up, she will make the second of the two after missing the first, after missing the front end of the two free throws. Just been a big struggle tonight, those free throws. And Robin sinks the second as Michigan is five of eight from the line now. And now Western Michigan ball as Bailey dribbling with Dilk defending top of the key, getting the screen from Mobley. And Mobley now with the ball, defended by Hillman on the, on the left block, cutting in and getting the ball and shooting is Walker who misses, and it is off of Hillman going for the rebound. Western Michigan will retain possession. And Schaefer is taking the ball out now, getting the ball, and that's a moving, oh, that's a Travel. walk. Travel on Schaefer. Michigan ball. And Western Michigan's playing a full court press now with Bailey all over Dilk. And that's a blocking foul. Got to do something to try to limit this lead right now, but <laughs> it's just a big advantage for Michigan right now to have that 20-point lead. But Michigan hasn't been able to really pull away yet. 
And now Dilk again with the ball top of the key. Pass to Robbins. Robbins back out to Hillman, top of the key. And Cedor on the right wing now. Kaiser calling for it. Dilk from the top of the three-point line on the top of the key. And she's missing that. That is her fourth straight miss from the three-point line, not making one on the day. And it is a foul on Dilk as Schaefer attempts the layup coming in from uh, the miss by Dilk on the three-point attempt in transition. And she's going to the line for two after she missed the layup attempt. Michigan is 0 for their last four. Has not made a field goal in the last three minutes and 37 seconds yeah. worth four turnovers in that span. As Western Michigan makes the front end of the two free throws. And Schaefer shooting again, missing now. Kaiser with the rebound. Kaiser pass to Dilk on the right sideline. Trying to get trapped by the Western Michigan team, but they are unsuccessful as Dilk does pick up her dribble right before. Oh, and that's a back and forth as she passes wow. to Kaiser. Kaiser was bumped after she received the ball on the on the offensive end of the court there, but then no foul call as she was bumped back on the defensive side of the court for Michigan over over and back called. If it was one thing last year that I knew from this Michigan basketball team was that they had a hard time trying to pull away late in games and sometimes cost them some games too. Michigan now leading 53-34 to 34 with two minutes remaining in the third quarter. And it is now Western Michigan. Schaefer passed to Mobley. Mobley in the key and it looked like she walked but no call there. And that's a three second call on her. Maybe a makeup call as everyone in the arena and their grandmothers were calling for that walk. And it is now Dilk bringing the ball up, defended by Bailey. Dilk getting past Bailey and on the right side. And Bow going up for the layup on the right block. And she will go to the line for two. Dilk, only two points on the day. One of seven from the field, 0 oh, four from three. She does have eight rebounds and four assists, though. Stuffing the stat sheet kind of thing one thing similar I've seen between the men's and women's team is that here in the second half they've had a hard time trying to put teams away early on in these first games and Dilk makes the first of two from the line might be just off-season cobwebs but <laughs> we're hoping and Dilk dribbling and misses the second free throw attempt and Western Michigan with the defensive rebound and Mobley now an easy layup in transition on the pass from Schaefer. And Dilk now bring the ball up the court on the left sideline. Pass a pass a Cedor on the left on the left baseline corner. Pass out to Robbins for three. No good. Rebound Western Michigan. Bring the ball up now. Michigan's gonna need a big bucket to fall. Schaefer now dribbling on the left on the right block up and under. Somehow she got that to go over Cedor. And it is now Michigan with a 16-point lead as Robbins with the ball on the right wing. Pass out to Cedor on the left wing and shoots for three. No good, but that is Dilk with her ninth rebound of the day. With the pass to Robbins now. Robbins on the right wing. Pass to Hillman. Hillman passes Cedor, and that's a turnover. Cedor cutting. Late. Hillman wasn't able to reach her. And now Western Michigan, Schaefer is on the right wing, pulling up for three. No good, too, too strong, and off of Western Michigan's Mobley. It is going to be Michigan ball with 37 seconds remaining in the third quarter, up 54 to 38. As I was saying, I think Michigan just needs a big bucket to fall right now to kind of change the momentum of this game. They just need to stop the bleeding. Michigan, Western Michigan's gone on a little bit of a run here as Michigan has made zero field goals of their last six attempts and hasn't hit one in the last five minutes and 20 seconds with their only points coming from the line in that span. And Dilk now dribbling the ball up the court, crossing half court. Trying to get rid of a defender. And that's a foul called on Walker wow. as, she, as she bumped Dilk. And they've been harassing the she ball handler in. all day. <laughs> and it appears she's going to go for the go to the line as Michigan is now in the bonus with each team having five fouls. Amy Dilk going to the line for two. 
where she is one of two on the day. Three points for her. She made the first. She made the first free throw of the last two, and she does so here, making the first of her two attempts. Michigan now leads by 17, 55 to 38. 28 seconds remaining in the third quarter as Dilk shoots the second free throw, and it's good. Western Michigan now bringing the ball up the court down by 18, trying to make this a 15 point or 16 point deficit. They came into this third quarter down 19 as they now have outscored Michigan in this quarter. And they're gonna hold the ball for the last shot here with 11 seconds remaining now. 10, nine, eight as Cedor is guarding. Cedor hits the ball and it knocked it and Dilk gets the steal and she goes up with one second remaining and it's good. Layup for Dilk is good. And Michigan now nice. with a 20 point lead and I jinxed Western Michigan. Michigan outscored Western Michigan by one point there in the third quarter. I said it too soon. And now Dilk, seven points, scoring the last five for Michigan there in that quarter with three of those coming from the line, making one of two and then two of two, and then hitting that field goal there as time expired. Amy Dilk, again, stuffing that stat sheet. Nothing new for her as she almost had a triple-double last year against Washington and Amy Dilk in that game in that game she 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 was she was a monster she had she did finish second all time among Michigan freshmen in total assists and in the game that I was thinking of she had 10 assists against Ohio State and then 11 against that that team right there and she's just added to that here Eight, with four assists and nine rebounds to go along with those seven points. And Robbins is leading the way for this Michigan squad. 14 points there for her. Yeah, as, as rightfully so, uh, Kayla Robbins is a senior. has definitely had uh, a lot of experience now, and she is should definitely be one of the leaders of this team, and she's definitely showing that tonight. Not, not just in terms of points, but kind of in pace as well, especially with uh, his, uh, being in for about 27, 27 minutes. She's been very uh, solid tonight. Yes, she has been. And it's, again, all of the contributors on this Michigan team, not one person leading the way. It's it's everyone chipping in. And it's it's been working as Michigan's leading by 20 points against this Western Michigan team. What have you seen in that third quarter? At the at the end, when, when nothing was really going Michigan's way as they've made one of their last seven field goals, but still still working towards making making their way and, and outscoring Western Michigan that quarter. How did you see them fight through that adversity? I think it was just, you know, it's time to go. We need, I think it, it was a little bit of, a, you know, urgency to really want to start to come away with this game and start to really take control again. And I think it was just the urgency and will just... <laughs> to start to put more pressure on Western Michigan coming up court, that they were able to get a few more turnovers to help them on some easy buckets the other way. Yes, the intensity is up, especially after that technical foul knocking out a Ken Ray Johnson from this game. As we are back with Western Michigan now going left to right, shooting on the basket, and it is Robbins blocking the Western Michigan player's attempt. That was Walker going up from the right block, and that was blocked by... Kayla Robbins. It'll be Western Michigan go, ball yeah. now <laughs> on the baseline. And she passes it in to Wool. Wool back out to Schaefer. Schaefer dribbling in on the right side on the free throw line extended on the right side is a bucket by Reed. Reed's first of the day. And now it is Dilk on the on the left wing getting a screen from Nas Hillman. Nas Ooh, Hillman. Nice one. Big screen. Brick wall there. And is Michelle Cedor on the right wing. Pass out to Dilk in the corner. And that's and good. Mary. Dilk now in double digits, scoring the last eight points for this Michigan team. Cedor guarding the Western Michigan player as she brings the ball up the court. Hillman guarding Mobley. Mobley pass out to Western Michigan's Wool for three. Good in the it's corner answered. on the left side. <laughs> 
And again, we're going basket for basket here as Dilk passes to Seedor. Seedor to Hillman. Hillman no good on the layup from the left, well, from the right block, but she is fouled. And we'll go to the line for two. Hillman has not been, been to the line today. She has eight points, a little less than her season average last year of 13 and on four of six shooting. She's kind of been the silent type tonight, but she's definitely been able to contribute a pretty, pretty good chunk of, of her own tonight, either in points. And now she is making the first free throw there with one to go. And it is good. Making two of two, bringing that average free throw average for Michigan above 70% on the day. And Schaefer getting the and one in transition wow. off of that made free throw. They really pushed that ball up and Seedor yeah. not able to recover fouling Schaefer gotta really on get, that right block. Got to really get back there and uh, not be able to give them those easy buckets. I've been seeing that a lot tonight. I think it's just trying to get back in time just to get it. And Schaefer at the line now, missing her one attempt. And the whistle blows. Violation. There was a violation on Michigan. And Schaefer will shoot again. That was a violation on Michelle Sidor. She stepped in the lane too soon. And one more coming for Western Michigan. Again, she cannot hit, but now the rebound goes to Nas Hillman. And Amy Dilk pushing the ball up the court, looking for someone to pass to. Brings it back out, top of the key screen by Nas Hillman. Bring it to the right side of the court now. Pass to Robbins on the block, and she goes up. She looked like she was fouled, but no call, and she missed the layup there. Pretty and strong attempt. That looked like a carry by Western Michigan, but again, no call. And dump off to Mobley. Mobley in the key. Pass back out to Reed. Reed to Mobley. Mobley defended by defended by Robbins. And she got that bucket to go. 16-point deficit now for Western Michigan. Wow, good defense there. It was <laughs> I think that was number 23, Walker, actually, yes. who got a good hand on that ball. Amy Dilk trying to push the ball up there. Trying to do a long-distance pass, knocked out of bounds by Walker. Now Dilk passed the ball from out of bounds to Cedor. Nas Hillman now getting the ball and missing the layup. No one in front of her there, just a whiff. And now it is Western Michigan pushing the ball up, missing that three-point attempt. And wow, Jess really? Robbins gets foul. that rebound. And... Schaefer just ran into her, and she is on the deck, getting up now. But uh, that was—I uh, think she sold that a little bit. That was no, that, that was a foul on Schaefer. Oh, it was. That was a foul oh, on yeah, Schaefer. Right. She, that, that got a few oohs okay, and ahs from the crowd yeah. as she just ran into Robbins there and was on the ground. It is, it is C. Door now trying to get a step back three, and Nas Hillman chases it down on the left sideline or the left corner. Excuse me, Dilk now on the left wing. Defended by Schaefer on the left side. Passes it to Cedor on the top of the key. Dribbling on the left side. Short corner, Robbins. But before Robbins could get that shot off, there was a charge called on Cedor. As after she passed it to Robbins, she just continued running and through the defender. As she checks out, Danielle Rausch coming in. And Haley Brown going out with Isabel Verjao coming in for her. Western Michigan's really getting turnovers from Michigan right now. It's exactly what they want to get more opportunities to score to get back in the game. And Western Michigan now posting up with Mobley on Verizhou. Verizhou with the block off of Verizhou. Seems like any time comes into the game, she makes her presence felt right away, either with a rebound or a block or it's something. It's hard not to. It's that's hard Verizhou's, not to. She's got the height advantage. That's right. That's Verizhou's third block of the day. And Western Michigan ball now, taking it from the baseline, dribbling in. And blocked by Verizhou. Verizhou with the rebound. And now Danielle Rausch on the right wing. Telling Isabel Verizhou to cut. Nas Hillman now getting the ball on the right block. Spin around, jump, turn around, jumper, no good. Western Michigan pushing the ball up. They got numbers two on one. Taking the three-point attempt to Schaefer from the right wing, no good. And Dilk with her 10th rebound of the day. And she's got a double-double pass up to Jess Rott to Kayla Robbins, Kayla Robbins, and one! Blocking foul, finishes the layup on the fast break, and she's going to the line for the three-point attempt. For the three-point play, tack on one more after this free throw. 
Yeah, I think I think right there she put a little bit too much shoulder into that one, but I think she got away with that and got the foul call. <laughs> yes. That's just a veteran move there. And Kayla Robin, 16 points on the day, 6 of 12 from the floor and 3 of 5 from the line. See if she can make it 4 of 6, and she does. Now with 17 on the day, leading Michigan. Michigan now up by 20 points. Or scratch that, 19, 66 to 47. Western Michigan ball now on the left wing. Amy Dilk trying to get her ball in the passing lane and does, but Western Michigan retains possession. And Wool now stripped by Roush. Roush diving on the floor and Wool doing the same. And they are tied up and it'll be Michigan ball as Western Michigan started the ball, started with the ball in the second half. Man, Amy Dilk has a double-double. I mean, with her size, that's pretty impressive right now. Yes, and you, you would normally think that her, her double-doubles would be points and assists, but this game, it's with points and rebounds. She's been all over the place tonight. And now it is Robbins with the ball on the left wing. Pass out to Dilk, top of the key. Shoots, fires, no good. And it is Western Michigan ball now, bringing it up on the left side of the floor. Pulling up from the left wing, no good. Rebound, Robbins. Robbins passing up to Dilk. Dilk on the right sideline, dribbling to the center of the floor. Pass out to Verjao. Verjao looking like she's going to shoot the three, but doesn't pass out to Roush. And that's a foul called on Bailey, who was defending Hillman off ball down in the key. One and one. I believe. No, nope, No, that'll be, that'll be on the baseline. Yep. It, right. it resets every quarter, so that's, yeah, that's four fouls. That. Yep. Four fouls on Western Michigan this quarter. One more will be in the bonus for Michigan. And... Amy Dilk passing the ball to Danielle Roush. Danielle Roush wrapping around to the right side and finishing and one. Great that's, that's the third and one of the day for Michigan. As last game against Northwood, it seemed like nothing could go down after a foul was called as Emily Kaiser had the only and one in that game. But this game, it just seems like every foul call on a layup attempt, Michigan's converting the and one. Strong finish there, just taking it in, taking the contact and getting the bucket. And Danielle Roush now at the line. And that Western Michigan player is now out of the game. Walker, Fouled out. Walker out of the game then? or The band was heard doing their famous see ya. As that's what they do when the opposing team's player is fouled out of the game and we have a sub coming in now as it is now Cronky coming in yep. for 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 Walker or Conkley excuse me Conkley and Roush from the free throw line misses and Nas Homan fighting for it and gets it but an errant pass to Roush is recovered by Western Michigan. Western Michigan passing around three-point line. No good there by Conkley. Rebound Isabel Verjao. Dilk pushing the ball up the court to the middle. Back out Roush for three from the right wing. No good. Nas Homan fighting for the rebound and out of bounds. She dribbled it out of bounds when she was trying to get that rebound. Yeah, and that was a big loss for Western Michigan. Walker... She had 11 points, even though she had a struggle tonight at 4 for 20. She was a big presence there. And it is now Western Michigan bringing the ball up the court. Bailey defended by Roush and pass to Conkley. Now in the corner, dumped down to Conkley as she is against Verizal. And Verizal is called for the foul and one. Verizal saying her hands were in the air, straight up. And still fouled called on her. That is her third of the day as Nas Hillman, excuse me, Nas Hillman is coming out of the game for Haley Brown. And Conkley at the line now, trying to convert this and one for Western Michigan. Shoots no good. Dilk with the rebound, her 11th of the day. 10 coming on the defensive end, one offensive rebound. Pass to Robbins now on the right wing. Robbins to Verjao. Verjao, no one guarding her. Dilk on the left wing, getting the screen from Verjao. Verjao looking to slip and get a pick and roll, but Dilk passes out to Robbins 
or that is Brown. Brown with the layup, weaving through the defense. Coming in game and making like, the presence Like already. a hot knife through butter. And it is now Bailey. Bailey with the ball for Western Michigan. On the left wing, pass out to Reed. Reed, pass to, pass to Wool. Wool in the right corner, shoots for three, no good. Rebound by Robbins. Robbins bring the ball up the court now. Two more rebounds, she has a double-double. Robbins missing the missing the layup attempt on the right side of the right side of the basket and it is Western Michigan getting the rebound pushing the ball up the court now is Bailey. Bailey with Danielle Roush guarding her. Putting the moves on her. It looked like she walked there but no call. And Western Michigan now 14 seconds remaining in the shot clock as Bailey has the ball on the left wing. Step back and she had a little James Harden there with the one foot one foot <laughs> step back. And no good with Danielle Roush getting that rebound. Amy Dilk now on the left wing. Pass to Verjao on the block. And posting up. Pass out to Robbins for three from the top of the key. No good. And it is Conkley with the rebound for Western Michigan. Michigan's advantage now is 70-49 to 49 with 335 remaining in the fourth quarter. As it is Waters now for Western Michigan. Passing it to Conkley to Bailey. Back to Conkley now. On the right block, step back, and splash. Good over Verjao. And now it looks like we're going to have a whole new group of the next dead ball coming in for Michigan as Dilk drives <laughs> in with the left hand. Nobody could guard her there through the defense with the left. There Michigan up 72 51, 309 remaining in the fourth. There was some miscommunication there <laughs> for Western Michigan because Amy Dilk made that look so easy. No, oh, it was a very nice move by her as well. It was. Put a little fake to the right, go to the left. No one able to stop her as the defense was shifted over to the right side of the court and finishing with the left over Conkley. Dilk scoring 10 points in this second half, really She's in the last really 10 minutes. Yeah. From, from the last two minutes of the third quarter, and so far in the first seven minutes of this fourth quarter, she now has 12 points on the day with 11 rebounds and five assists. And She only has two personal fouls, too, so she's no. been actually very... She's had a clean game pretty much, too, even though she's been out there for a long time. Yeah, 30 minutes. She and Robbins are both in 30 minutes. Robbins is the one leading Michigan scoring attack today with 17 points and eight rebounds of her own, almost having a double-double. She can... With, with two more boards, she gets a double-double in these last 309. And I know those are always big for players, especially early in the season. It kind of gives you a good confidence booster early in the season to maybe hopefully create some momentum early in the season and give you a good start. What are you looking for? With, with this game pretty much all but wrapped up, with Michigan up by 21 points with three minutes left, what are you looking for to, to finish this off on a high note? I think it's more right now, try to get your players in that you know are going to be coming in late in the games, I think, throughout the rest of the year. Some who don't get that much playing time right now to uh, see what they can do a little bit. Um, still keep a cup, just maybe four starters out there. Try, try to put someone else out there to kind of see what they can do. As Michigan's rolling out, an entirely new group minus Danielle Roush is staying in the game from that last group. We have Maddie Nolan and Michelle Cedor, the freshmen, freshmen are coming in. Emily Kaiser coming in for Verjao and Priscilla, Priscilla Sminge, the sophomore, yeah. coming in for Robbins. Yeah, good idea to get some of those freshmen in there to get some experience and some uh, playing time. That'll help them definitely later in the season if they can get it right now. And it is now Western Michigan's Schaefer bring the ball up the court. Pass to Walker on the left wing. Back up to Waters. Waters pass down to Wool. Wool on the left corner and she lost the ball out of bounds looking for Walker. It'll be Michigan ball now. I guess the presence of her was just too much. <laughs> she couldn't control the and ball. And Western Michigan with full court press. But a little a little off. Let, letting, letting Michigan dribble, but just defending full court. A soft full court press. 
if you if you if you will. Great cut. Oh, Priscilla Smeenge not able to finish the backdoor cut. Emily Kaiser finding her on that look. Ball off the bottom of the backboard, and that is a layup attempt by by Schaefer on Western Michigan. Rebound by Danielle Rausch. Cross court pass to Cedor, bringing the ball up the court on the left wing now. Emily Kaiser sealing her defender on the left block, looking for the ball. Cross court pass by Cedor. Cedor calling for it, not getting it. And it is Kaiser on the right block now with the left. And no good. Rebound Western Michigan. Two minutes remaining in this fourth quarter. 72 to 51, Michigan leads. Cedor getting crossed up, but able to get back to her defender. And that three point attempt by Western Michigan was no good. Rebound Western Michigan, and it is good. Walker able to score. And. Now it is a 19-point deficit for Western Michigan. One that won't be able to be overcome. No. <laughs> I'd say this was all about wrapped up. <laughs> yes, and it is Michelle Cedor now. Pass to Danielle Rausch on the right wing. Smeenge, top of the key. Back to Cedor on the left wing. Cedor with the large defender on her. Trying to make something happen with iso ball. And pass to Emily Kaiser on the right block. Back to Kaiser. And it is good, mid-range jumper for Emily Kaiser on that right side. Kaiser passed it to Danielle Rausch there on the uh, baseline. Then that was back to Kaiser. She is now has seven on the night. And now Danielle Rausch defending Walker, top of the key. Pass on the right block for Western Michigan. And she just lost it out of bounds. And they say that was off of Kaiser. But from my angle, Kaiser did not touch that ball. Just Conkley just lost it, but they'll they'll call it a block. Yeah, Kaiser with their uh, size is able to really I think create a lot of pressure on uh, opposing teams, which is yes. so huge. Yes, yeah, so with three players over six foot two, it's it's very big for for Michigan. And 50 seconds remaining in this fourth quarter, Michigan 74, Western Michigan 53, as it is a blocking oh. foul on Emily Kaiser. Yeah. With Walker going to the line. Walker putting up an astounding 21 jump shots in this game. Just was just a little inside that arc of that restrict, restricted uh, circle there. Yes, she she had position. She was planted, not moving. But just a foot inside of that little circle. And Walker to the line for two now. And missing the first. After their hot start going 9 of 10 from the free throw line early on, Western Michigan's cooled off going four of nine and now Walker misses the first and makes the second and now it's Smeenge passing it to Cedor who's bringing the ball up court Cedor to Nolan in the right corner Nolan to Kaiser on Good the right pass. block and finds ah. her for two make that nine and now it is Schaefer bringing the ball up for Western Michigan. Stop, picks her ball, picks the ball up at the free throw line, and pass back to Conkley now on the block, on the right block, and it is a jump ball as Smeen's got her hands in there and would not let go. Good defense being played right there. 21 seconds left in the quarter. This is going to be the last possession of the game, the last potential scoring possession of the game, I should say, as Michigan leads by 22. And it is Schaefer taking the ball blocked by Sha blocked by Roush. And, oh, she goes up for two after getting oh. the steal from Roush. And Kaiser fouls her, trying to get the second block of the possession. Just came down with that arm just a little too much. Got her arm. And now 15 seconds left in this game with Schaefer going to the line for two, missing the first. As she Schaefer is second on Western Michigan scoring this game, but she's taken eleven fewer shots than the next from the from the top scorer. As Schaefer makes the second, ending the day with twelve points. As that ball inbounded to Michelle Cedor, full court press by Western Michigan knocks it out of bounds. So Michigan will take will retain possession and take the ball out with thirteen seconds left. With Roush bringing the ball up now. Bring it to the front court, just trying to run out the time. And eight seconds, seven seconds, going to the left side of the court. Passes to Cedor. Cedor driving baseline and puts up a shot and misses as time expires. 
Seedor yeah. trying to look for two more points there to add to her stats. Yeah, three uh, Michigan players ended in double figures in points. So that's pretty impressive tonight for this team. As Michigan wins this game 76 to 55 with Kayla Robbins leading the way 17 points in 34 minutes. Six of 14 from the field with a plus minus of 24. Along with her plus minus of 24 was Amy Dilk with a plus minus of 24 in her 30 minutes with 12 points, 11 rebounds, and five assists. This One. Michigan team, was a, that, that was a very, very good win for them. But a, an issue that I saw was the 19 turnovers as everyone in the starting five had at least two. And, and Verizhao contributed with two off the bench with Cedor and Kaiser each having won. So going forward, this team, this was a very, very confident team and a, a, very, a very good win for them as, as they won by 21 points, only outscoring with this Western Michigan team by two points in the second half. But that, that, that's a stat category that I would like to see the overall product di diminished. Yeah, those 19 turnovers are going to be a huge killer, especially when you get into Big Ten play, and even some uh, tougher non-conference opponents that they're going to have before then. I think uh, a couple uh, of them. We, uh, Michigan plays against Notre Dame on Saturday, November 23rd, and Syracuse on December 5th. And then uh, later in the season, once in conference play, Michigan will play against Maryland. So all ranked teams, all good teams. Even Florida State on the road, so that's going to be a tough one too. So yes, Michigan will have, again, this is the first game of the season. So we have, yeah. we'll, we'll have to cut them some slack, but this, this, was, a very, this was a very confident team and a, a compelling a compelling team to watch as this season will go forward, as I'm sure they will climb up the ranks in this top 25. Yeah, depending on what happens uh, in front of them, but yeah, I think they're pretty good, pretty solid start, and I can say that going forward, I think they're going to be an interesting team to watch. And that'll be all for today, as I am Zach Corson, along with Ryan Buckman and Charlie Goodwin, as we just announced Michigan beating Western Michigan University 76 to 55. Thank you for listening. And you can join us again on Sunday, November 10th at 2 o'clock for our game against Bradley here back at the Chrysler Center. For Zach Corson, Ryan Buckman, and Charlie Goodwin, good night and go blue.